east to Hunter's Edge, north to Incomparable Suffering. Well then. Southie. By the looks of things, it seems we're heading towards Hunter's Edge. The town where I was stationed before I met you lot. Before we get there, you should know the whole yarn. What I saw there. Why I fled. Yes, comrade. I fled a coward bearing the insignia of a sauce hunter. I think so, comrade. Even though you might never look at me the same way, I hope I won't lose you as compatriots. We, the villagers and myself, were corralled in the town square. The orcish queen sauntered into the middle, proud of the chaos she'd created. She screamed if we knew why they had come. Slowly, she approached me and leaned close, her hot, foul breath like fire on my face. With one hand, she clasped my throat. With the other, she reached into my pocket and pulled out the gem I'd taken from the orcs I'd killed earlier that day. I was a thief. She said, I'd taken something dear to her, and I had earned punishment. I thought she'd destroy me right then and there, but she did something worse. That's right, comrade, and I was soon to find out why. She brought forth one of her soldiers, a larger orc I'd never seen, and he was covered in black gleam and armor. She placed the stone in his chest plate, and something happened. He transformed into something... Something I'll never forget. She made me watch as she sent villager after villager before the great transformed beast. He crushed them all, one by one, each more gruesomely than the last. He seemed to revel in the work. I could do nothing, comrade. I couldn't save them. I couldn't help them. I could only watch. Don't you see it's already over? Don't you see it's too late? These orcs weren't out for riches or land. They only came for blood. No, all that's left in Hunter's Edge is a debt to be paid, comrade. And I intend to collect it.
Aaron has as many friends as the man with many cheeses. I'm straight. I'm true. Aaron by the dozens. Dearest customer, I've never seen an aura so plagued by ether. Thank a starty, I've just the earth scroll to ground you. Halibut, sheep's cheese, tomatoes. No better solution to the zombie problem than a set of silver arrows. Let's see. Halibut, sheep's cheese, tomatoes. Any takers? Come on, you chickens! Pay the big cheese on your blood with a wheel of the good stuff! Get it while it's fresh! These batches only out for the bees! Join the Spud Club if you've got an eye for farm potatoes. Here for your daily serving of veggies, please partake of the plumpest produce ever produced. Mm. To the zombie problem and a set of silver arrows. Let's see. Halibut, sheep's cheese, tomatoes. Well, what sort of arrows do you want? Freezing? Silver? Poison? Get to the point. Aaron has as many friends as the man with many cheeses. Toe of snake, wing of worm. Brew and spice them, stir and churn. Quiet day on the market, it seems. Get it while it's fresh. These batches only hours from the sea. Lord, son, spiritless. Perhaps wrestling an earth elemental will inject some vim into your routine. Heavenly herring, delicious dogfish, yours for a scrap of gold each. Quiet day on the market, it seems. as many friends as the man with many cheeses. Any takers? Come on, you chickens! Pay the big cheese on your block with a wheel of the good stuff! Let's see. Halibut, sheep's cheese, tomatoes. Watch the undead quiver in their mouldy boots. Not in the mood for cheese. 
No excuse is more holes than a slice of this fine Gorman bag. No better solution to the zombie problem than a set of silver arrows. Red and orange, yellow and green, the finest veggies size seals ever seen. Lawn sauce, spiritless. Perhaps wrestling an earth elemental will inject some vim into your routine. Join the Spud Club if you've got an eye for farm potatoes. Pay the big cheese on your block with a whirl of the good stuff. <laughs> Food for cheese. The excuse is more holes than a slice of this fine Gorman man. Quiet day on the market, it seems. Don't scuttle away before you've tried some of the ocean's finest bounty. How many crab claws would you like? Three? Eleven? There's more holes than a slice of this fine Gorman man. Sheep's cheese, tomatoes. Not in the mood for cheese. Now I listen, Dean. What? A slice of this fine Gorman bear. Tall of snake, wing of worm, brew and spice of stir and churn. Not in the mood for cheese. The excuse is more holes than a slice of this fine Gorman bear. Heavenly herring, delicious dogfish, yours for a scrap of gold each. Not in the mood for cheese. The excuse is more holes than a slice of this fine Gorman bear. Fresh haddock, perfect for a fry up. <laughs> Aaron has as many friends as the man with many cheeses. Red and orange, yellow and green, the finest veggies size seals ever seen. Let's see. Halibut, sheep's cheese, tomatoes. Get it while it's fresh. This batch is only hours from the sea. Let's see. Halibut, sheep's cheese, tomatoes. Join the Spud Club if you've got an eye for farm potatoes. Pay the big cheese on your block with a whirl of the good stuff. Lawn spiritless. Perhaps wrestling an earth elemental will inject some vim into your routine. Don't scuttle away before you've tried some of the ocean's finest bounty. How many crab claws would you like? Three? Eleven? Aaron has as many friends as the man with many cheeses. Let us see if you can choose the finest greens!
I need to dry off. I oh there. A word of warning, Wanderer, afore you continue on your merry way. See these corpses here? Be a good fellow and take them as a hint that this town isn't the pastoral little paradise it once was, that. Immaculates, orcs and humans both, have taken Hunter's Edge. Its villagers are now slaves in the mines to the west, or they've been bled dry of their last drop of life, reduced to mere fuel that must light the wicked candle that is Bloodstone. Long as you live in the limbo between coming and going though, why not have a look at what I have to sell? You'd be surprised to see what a scouring skeleton can gather together in a dying town. Yeah! Well, don't go round anger and immaculates if you want to keep your vitals intact. <laughs> Though perhaps it won't be very long before they have a stab at one another's vitals instead. I have the feeling there's trouble brewing between the orcs and the humans in there. And who can blame them, really? Just ain't natural for them to consort, I say. Only good orc. Well, you know how the phrase goes. Can't say I remember who I was before the change came over me, but these days I'm a travelling trader of sorts. There's an immaculate necromancer in the village ahead. She's the one who brought me back from, well, wherever I was. She's an especially bright one, you know. Most necromancers can only revive a dead corpse into an animated one, but she manages to yank back some semblance of consciousness too. I don't remember much, but the thrill of trade certainly calls to me. <laughs> Maybe I was a merchant in my former life. Who knows? These days, most undead are busy haunting Sicil or picking the way in the Lucula mines. But I keep a low profile and stay out of sight. I haven't been bothered by an immaculate yet, and I hope to keep it that way. Potent heat! Toasty! An intact finger. Hey, you. Just what that come on, come on. Time's for. away. You can speak. You don't look like a tribesman or orc, but... But I suppose I can't be certain. Then again, I've never heard of a dark soul gifted with the speech of the wild. Hmm, oh, that bothersome old Tom. No, he and I are hardly friendly, much less friends. I've much more important things on my mind than him and his incessant pestering. Jinxica is my name, and until recently I lived a placid sort of life among the people of Hunter's Edge. The baker might leave me a bit of milk left over from this breakfast. The barkeep stroked my back between filling glasses. I had many friends here, but none so dear as a little trio. A married pair and their daughter, employed by the wizard to keep his home. They spent many long hours squashing fleas that plagued me and shared their warm beds with me each night. If you come to this village to help and not to harm, you might be able to save those three kind souls from the orcs that have invaded. Ugh. Such misery in our sad town. A kind but private man he is. He set up his home here several years ago, but never remained there long enough before jetting off to tend to some matter or other. The dark invaders seem very interested in him indeed. They've been skulking around outside the house since they arrived but not even one of their filthy vermin can penetrate the wizard's protective enchantments. Would that an invasion were all! 
They destroyed every crumb of life they could find and sent their filthy rats to seek out those who evaded them. Each life they took infused their strange stones with power. Their queen glowed with delight as a parade of victims were slain before her. It was as though she was taking in a beautiful song. The human tribe came shortly after. They had their own supply of the glowing stones, and the orc queen took no easy liking to them. Still, it seems they are working towards some similar goal. They haven't destroyed one another. Yet. They've survived this carnage so far by concealing themselves most cleverly. I've done my best to guard their hiding place from the slime-bellied rats attempting to sniff them out. But I fear my efforts aren't enough. Until the village has been rid of vermin, those three sweet souls may be found at any time. Savages by savages employed. The orcs have one among them. The Rat Catcher, they call him, who claims to have trained rats to do his bidding. They've swarmed the place in search of hidden villagers, and unless every last one of them is split from tail to snout, they're sure to find my friends. But you're not like the brutes inside those walls. No, you approached me with hand, not boot, outstretched. Perhaps, perhaps you could help me. With these rats running about, it's only a matter of time before my friends are caught. They must be squashed, every last one of them. I've done my best so far, but there are simply too many for one set of claws to handle. With your help though, with your help it could be done. The rats gone, my friends, safe. I can slip through these walls as I please, but you'll need to find your own way into the village. And remember, my friend, kill every last rat you find, or three dear souls will be lost. Source Hunter, welcome, welcome. Ah, uh, yes, that was a small fib on my part, I'm afraid. Zandalore is known as the Keeper of the Source, after all. And I didn't know how Source Hunters would react to my association with such a colorful character. I'm watching on with weary eyes how the Immaculates strike again. They've gone from shedding blood among their own to recruiting orcs and cutthroats to do it for them. From what I can tell, the village of Hunter's Edge is this cult's most wretched victim. It was once a quiet sort of village. Families and small-time merchants, mostly. Recently, it was targeted by a tribe of orcs waving the Immaculate Banner. Their leader, Grutilda, is known far and wide for her cruelty and cunning. She oversaw the murder of countless villagers and used their blood to fuel a great number of bloodstones. Once they were dead, they were reanimated as undead corpses and sent to work in the mines of Lakula. By order of Leandra, the orcs were joined by a tribe of humans from the northern peaks of Tanneroth. A band of male warriors are they, and they devote allegiance to their leader, Jarl. Jarl arrived with his own formidable supply of bloodstones, which means his tribe has been operating under directions from the Conduit for some time, where once they ransacked for base pleasure and material gain, now they do it by the will of the Goddess. These are far from the blindly devoted Immaculates of Silverglen, however. The orcs and the humans here alternate between bitter fighting and hostile peace. Personally, I believe they're best exploited through their rivalry. 
Get them to fight each other, and you can stand on the sidelines and warm yourself upon the flames. He has a residence at the far end of town. Though I have my doubts he's having people over for tea now that the Immaculates have landed. Know that Zandalore is wily, so beware. If a wizard doesn't want you in his home, you'll know it. Pity the intruder that heedlessly tries to waltz his way into that dwelling. Nevertheless, his house is the very place you'll want to search. The accumulated knowledge stored there is quite phenomenal, and beyond a doubt, one of Leandra's most urgent pursuits. I could do with a cold drink. You there, Flatlander. Stay at your business. Isn't that a right shame, lost one? It seems this ugly muggle with the last you'll see of the goddess's green world. Brothers, to arms! wants you to take a closer look at something. Could something of interest be buried hereabouts? And so, now your constable and lord of this old tribe get it ripped to shreds, can you? Poor fellow, living in fear under the great Matilda's boots. That gleam. Keeping the peace for now, Chief Jordan. That would have trust yours to keep in the meantime. That's.